usual. Looks to be an engine oil cooler line. Well, only thing to do is to fix it. It would appear the blue car is jealous of the tan car. Yeah, you get the tan car home, the blue car starts breaking. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hopefully it won't be too bad of a fix. That should just be three bolts, three screws-ish. But we're about to find out. So this is what we're looking at. You can see back there, I don't even know if I can get the ring clean at it. It's so far in there. See my finger wiggling around in there? That's the top hose. So that one should be really fun to get to. Somewhere down in there is the bottom hose. There's the bottom hose. It's not too bad to get to. But instead of taking those loose, I'm going to take the ones on the engine loose because it's going to be at the lowest point. And therefore, all the oil will drain down there. So this is kind of an underside look, best I can. It goes down the belly, back towards the oil filter. Somewhere back in there. There it should be. So we'll start pulling it out, letting it drain. And we'll pray that's not too bad of a job. So here's somewhat of a better view. We didn't get everything in focus. There is what we're changing. That's the oil, there's the oil filter. The oil filter adapter and the cooler line. But we gotta take some things loose first. We got the low oil level sensor in the oil pan. We got the wire for the uh, O2 sensors and hiding back there. Right there is a knock sensor. And they're all run right in between there. Not the worst place in the world to route a wire, but not the best. So it keeps it off the muffler or off the exhaust. So I'll probably put it back the way it is. Not sure if it's factory or not, but it seems to be effective. Uh, that is a 15 millimeter. I've tried a 916th and 916th. It won't even go over it. So I'm pretty confident it's 15. Probably gonna have to put a box wrench in there and uh, just quarter turn at a time. I uh, might be able to get a ratchet back there once I get all the wires out of the way, but we'll find out. Can't really get you in there to get a good look at me trying to take this apart. So, I'll just leave you right there. And then we can both be miserable together trying to take this apart. Now I'm gonna try my best not to destroy all these sensors because I'm not really in the business of buying more sensors. And of course, the little tab that I need to see is on the top. And my oil level sensor does work and I would enjoy keeping it working. From what I can tell, that clips over Where a little screwdriver or possibly a hook tool. Hook tool would actually come out really handy right now. That's where I like my little Harbor Freight hook tools. Not my good Matco ones, because my Matco ones will stab you. Harbor Freights are dull. Well, I'm going to go grab my hook tool. Because the options are not looking great. Let's see how bad the knock sensor is while I'm here hand in there, there we go. That one's pretty easy actually. I'll bring it in here so you can see it. Alright, you see them little dimples? You just take it like that, squeeze it, it pops right off. That one's an easy one. And the O2 sensor, it was easy too. Get your see it. Just pull your little clip, it pops right out. The oil level sensor, on the other hand, has a different story. I'm going to grab my hook tools and I'll be right back at it. 
And we're back. Kind of handy dandy little mirror. Wasn't quite the one I was looking for. I think it'll work even better. So let's see what we're looking at up here. Don't need strobe light. The mirror is so dirty. I can't see anything through it. So, I'll clean it up a little bit. That's better. Yep, looks just as I thought. Now, if I only had three hands, I can hold the light where I can see it, I can hold the mirror where I can see it, and use a hook tool. But instead, we'll just go in blind and hope for the best. Flashlight just a little bit better. This will go a little faithful trick. And that is how that's done. Just like welding with a mirror. It sucks. Alright, I'm gonna bring it here so I can show you how it's done. You gotta pull that little tab up, but you can't really get to it because there's just a little opening in that sensor. You gotta stick the hook tool down and just pull it up, and then it does pull right out. That's how that's done. Let's see if I can maybe sneak the camera in there. This tight area. side of the moon in there. Round two. Right. There's mm, nails of oil in the eye. And no matter where I put the flashlight, it casts a shadow. We don't want a shadow, we want light. Alright, that's about the best I can do. Believe me, I've tried. You got oil in the eye. We gotta stick a little hook tool in there. So we're gonna hook tool and show you. You gotta stick it down in there, pry up, and pull your sensor out. It's that easy. Or maybe you'll get lucky. Chevrolet won't put it on upside down, so I don't think Chevrolet did. did it. So I made it this far. Sensors are off. Knock sensor. Oil level sensor. O2 sensor. So we'll pull that. Get you a 3C here. This is hard working under a car and through a camera. All right, we'll pull our wiring harness and then. Pull our 15 millimeter bolt up there, we'll let her drain. We also got to find a bolt somewhere in that vicinity up there that holds the oil line cooler. Actually, it looks like you can see it right there, and it's not bolted back up. Hmm, that might be when I'm done. All right, let's get to it. Look at that good looking fender well. Yeah, I don't know who did that. Cool guy, though. Wires have been evicted to their temporary home. Got a drain pan in here. Maybe not. Scoot you around a little bit. That ought to work. Alright, wrench time. Next time I'm going to go all the way back down to the shop and get a wrench. Back again. You'll see I'm wearing safety glasses now. Eye protection is a must. Yes, it is a 15 millimeter. Now let's see if we can get a ratchet in there. 
There's my ratchet out. But in all honesty, eye protection is never a bad idea. Especially when you got a bunch of money invested in your eyes. And you can't get a ratchet in there. That's nice. And I should have grabbed some more clothes while I was out in the shop. See if we can have this run all down my arm. All right, not sure where I left off. Ran out of space as usual. Safety glasses. Got the bolt off up here. Or nut, I should say. Don't know what to do with my flashlight. About to break this loose. Oil's oh, probably gonna come raining down. Just like that. Managed to not cut my knuckles up, so that's always a good thing. Here's the thing. Yep, we're good. Alright, on to the front. Probably won't be able to film a whole bunch of this. That'll get you in here, maybe. Right there. That's one we're taking out. There's the driver's side, bottom of the radiator. No clue what size it is yet. It does look like it has an adapter, so that's awesome. I'll have to have two wrenches in there. And her upper. You can't really see it. Yeah, so that one's going to be a nightmare. So after further investigation, I'm sure that's not good either. But unfortunately, that's not the cause of our problem. Our problem is in this area, as you can tell by all the leaking fluid. So we're going to replace it anyways. And Clyde says good morning. I'm going to take a little break here and try and show you this. So we got a 19 millimeter on the back, a 16 millimeter on the hose. The 19 millimeters on the adapter. But that's not the main thing I want to show you. When you're in a tight spot like this, it seems like it would be pretty obvious but i see a lot of people not do this you can just use your wrenches together as leverage just like that for some reason i see people put them almost like a 180 and they fight each other like pulling down towards the cells of both wrenches just put them like this and squeeze the wrenches together it gives you a ton more leverage plus you can use both hands as leverage i mean Obviously, if you have a nut on one side or a bolt on one side and you only have one wrench, that ain't going to work. But this scenario works a lot in a lot of things. So keep that in mind when you're struggling. Sometimes there's easier ways. Not always, but sometimes. Great tip, Cadillac man. Thank you. Also, common sense would say do the bottom one first. You know, because if you do the top one, you're going to have oil dripping down on you when you're trying to do your bottom one. So, keep that in mind. And now the real fun begins. Alright, remember what I just said a second ago about not using your wrenches at 180 degrees from each other? Well, sometimes you have to. In this case, I have to. Uh, I got a wrench coming in by the air filter box, 19 millimeter, on the little brass adapter. Bring my 16 millimeter down on the front. Thank you. One way or another. Behind the radiator hose, and you can kind of almost see it if you squint and look cross-eyed. Okay. So, loosen that. Actually, loosen that pretty good. We are off. Now let's pull it out from underneath the car. And we'll be halfway done. And now we'll see if we can snake it out from in there. If we can put a sway bar on here, it'd be a lot easier. Let's see how good we can scratch it up.
Alright. It appears we put it in more of a bind than it originally was. And we got a ton of oil on the ground. That ain't a big deal, I just don't want to roll in it. Right. We've got to lose somehow. Not gonna ask how. Just gonna roll with it. Alright. That right there is by far the easiest way of taking it off. Hope you see what I just did, because I didn't. Now that we get that out of there, we'll compare it to a new one. As far as I can tell, it looks pretty similar. So we're going to roll with it. Throw it in there and see how she fits. You got this one from the parts store. Uh, you can order them online. You can actually get an AC Delco for what I paid for this one. But I was kind of wanting to get it done before it completely breaks and dumps all my oil out on the way home. So we'll throw it in there and see how it does. Can't do any worse than the one that's on there now. Also, if you're smart, you can use that to try and gauge what size wrench you need. Uh, not always are the aftermarket the same as the original, but sometimes you can get lucky. Pull the little brass bushing out, and it does have a rubber o-ring in there. Threw some thread tape on it, just as a little bit of extra insurance. So I'm going to thread this back up in the radiator. You don't want to tighten the guts out of it. It is a plastic radiator. It'll probably break. So just snug it up. Now comes the time to put the new one in. I'm going to leave a little protector on there. For one, it keeps junk off the gasket. For two, it keeps the gasket on there. And it'll keep junk out of the hose too. So I'm gonna try and do installation the opposite of removal. We'll see how that works out. Let's see, I can lay my head in this pile of oil here. The chicky chicks are coming to say hello too. Just like that. Wish I could have seen what it was bolted to. I'm assuming an oil pan gasket. The thing is, it's already undone. I'm not 100% certain. I would like for it to go back. But I'm not that worried about it to go back. It'd be cool. So far, I've put every bolt back on this car, including the 5.5 millimeter behind the dash. Behind the dash cluster, I should say. So if you pull the dash out of one of these, you know how much of a nightmare that one is. I wasn't going to put it back, but I was sitting there one day and I was like, you know what? The car is complete. I'd like for it to stay that way. I got that one hand tight. Now I'm going to see if I can... Fight the top one in. That'd take you long, but there's just literally no way to get a camera in there. Okay, so once again, right there, that little shiny thing, right there, you can see it. That's the fitting. I can't show you me putting it in, but I can kind of explain how I put it in. I didn't remove anything. You could remove the air box, it'd probably make it a little bit easier, but what fun is that? So, I kind of just stance myself, put my foot inside the bumper, and basically hug my arm around here, and hug my other hand through somewhere. I don't remember how I did it now. Just like that. I could just get the tip of my fingers on that, that uh, hex head. And then sometimes you just got to be one with your car. So basically what I did... Well, under the lower radiator hose. And you can get a good feel on it. You just can't hold the hose and thread the bolt at the same time. So basically what I did is I held the hose with my fingers, held the bolt with my thumb, jammed my fingers down here, 
where I can hold the other side of the bolt. And then you can actually thread it on fairly easy once you figure that out. So, maybe that'll save you some time. You just gotta get in there and break your wrists and your arms and they'll fit right in there. The crew's come to join the party, so if they're extra loud today, you know why. New lines are in, all tightened up, all routed, out of the way of everything, onto the back side. So if for some odd reason you weren't having fun before, this is where it completely redeems itself. I probably should have put this on before I put all the hoses together, but we'll see how it goes. I am a glutton for punishment. Excuse me. Let me get behind you here. You can totally put it on there with, with the front hoses on. <laughs> Don't you do it. I see you dripping there. I see you. It's trying to get me. It wants to go. It just doesn't know it yet. This is where I find out I put it on backwards. Booyah! Got it. I love that feeling when something seats into place. It's always a good feeling. And we are in. Now I just gotta plug everything up. That should do it. Uh, not really gonna add any oil to it because I already had oil. I put too much in there before because I knew it was gonna be leaking. So, I'm gonna run the wires, we'll be done. Lines are all on, all tight. I'm gonna spray it with some bright clean underneath clean up any oil residue because there's a bunch of it and I'm gonna fire it up see how it goes hopefully there's no leaks fingers crossed obviously well that didn't work out like I wanted it to yeah fired it up oil poured from underneath never a good sign sitting there I'm like oh man that sucks Look at my old uh, line. It's got gaskets on it. I said, hmm. You ever just sit and wonder and say, hmm. Did I really just do that? But then you think to yourself, no. Because I know something fell. Correct, you are. So, it wasn't the gasket. Thought to myself, classic rookie mistake. Looking at the new ones, I assumed it had O-rings. You'd think it would. So, pulled it all apart. Well, pulled half of it apart. Put my hand up there. Nothing. Probably can't see me. Nothing. No gaskets. Clean metal. No burrs. No nicks. Nothing. So, well, that's not good. When I put the first one together, I tighten it up fairly tight. I don't want to tighten the crap of it out, crap out of it, because it is a rubber O-ring. So I just snugged it up, and I thought to myself, maybe I had to tighten it tighter. Put it all back together, tighten the crap out of it. Almost thought I was gonna break the bolt. That's what I was worried about. Fired it up. Doesn't leak. So apparently, you gotta tighten them really, really tight. A lot tighter than I would like to tighten it. But, doesn't leak, so now that I wasted an entire can of brake clean, cleaning off the engine before I started it, round two. So, I guess if you take a piece of advice, don't clean up until you're done. And uh, sometimes you can make mistakes. I do. I'm human. It sucks. Could have been worse, but double check your gaskets. Make sure you don't double gasket it. In this case it wasn't, but it damn sure looked like it. Kind of gave me a scare for a second. But sometimes you have to tighten things a little bit tighter and you really like to. I don't really like to hammer down on gaskets or seals. Apparently this one needed it. But that's where it is. So we're done with this one for today. Until it decides to leak somewhere else, which looks like the valve cover is leaking too. I'm telling you, this thing is envious of the other car. It knows I'm going to spend some money on the tank Cadillacs, and it's like, uh, you haven't spent the money on me in a day. 
<sighs> yeah, you gotta love Cadillacs. So I'm gonna end it here. Uh, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't. Go for it. Do it. Like it. Comment. Share it. Ask questions. Uh, I'm going to make a short Fleetwood video about this also. A little fix-it videos. I uh, haven't seen anybody do a power steering line or a oil pressure cooler line. Might as well throw it with a repertoire. So, that'll be it for today. I will see you on the next go-around. Good shot. Got away free. It lives to die another day. <laughs> <laughs>